Much. That concludes general questions. And we'll turn, uh, we'll turn now to portfolio questions on culture, tourism and external affairs. Question number one from Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what consultations it has had with tourism businesses in the North East regarding factors that can impact on the effectiveness of their operation. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, Presiding Officer, uh, first of all, can I wish you and all the Chamber a happy Marches Day. Uh, long live uh, Linlithgow and long live the Marches. Uh, the Scottish Government recognises the growing importance of tourism to the North East economy uh, and is committed to its sustainable development. In March, I had the pleasure of visiting Aberdeen and giving the keynote address at Visit Aberdeenshire's conference, at which I met and heard firsthand from key individuals in the industry, not only about the issues they face, but the area's wider ambition. We will, of course, continue to engage with all stakeholders, including those in the tourism sector, in the delivery of our policies and functions. Liam Kerr. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Recently, Charles Skeen, the founder of the Skeen Group and one of the key individuals in the industry, uh, warned of the devastating impact the SNP's approach to business rates is having on his and other hospitality businesses in the North East. Has the Scottish Government considered the effect of those rates policies on the North East tourism economy? And if so, what do they propose to do about it? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, the poundage will be set at 49 pence in Scotland in 2019-20. That's lower than an inflation increase. It will ensure that over 90% of properties in Scotland will pay a lower poundage than they would in other parts of the UK next year. We also continue in 1920 uh, to offer the most generous package of reliefs in the UK, worth over £750 million. We will maintain the unique business growth accelerator, which encourages new business investment by temporarily suspending rates liabilities on new builds and non-domestic property improvements and of course we are continuing to apply transitional relief for all but the very largest hospitality uh, industry sector in Aberdeen City and Shire uh, to 2022 and that means a 12 and percent real terms annual cap and that's conf uh, confirmation that we value uh, the hospitality sector across Scotland but particularly in the area that he represents not only is there the general competitiveness in terms of business rates we've got additional support for the tourism sector in Aberdeen. Now, there may be some in terms of the higher range, higher end uh, hospitality sector that may have their own issues. But can I tell you, the vast, vast majority of tourism and hospitality uh, businesses in the North East welcome these measures. Question number two, Angus MacDonald. Thank you. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what the percentage change in foreign visitor numbers at Historic Environment Scotland sites has been since 2014. Fiona Hislop. Historic, Historic Environment Scotland's general visitor numbers have been steadily increasing since 2014. Overseas visitors to sites and care have increased by an estimated 41% in five years. This figure, based on visitor sampling across the estate, clearly indicates the growth of the organisation's international market in recent years. Reduction in the value of the pound since 2016 and the expansion of passenger numbers through Edinburgh Airport are two uh, driving forces behind this. Historic Environment Scotland seek to maintain the increase by working with partners, communities and stakeholders to develop a strategic vision and plans for prioritised sites. Angus MacDonald. I welcome the increased figures at historic sites, which are clearly a welcome boost to our economy, particularly locally, where a number of historic sites have benefited from being film locations for US finance dramas such as Outlander. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware, however, of an increase of foreign visitors in both her and my constituency visiting film locations at points of historic interest, which have resulted in an increased traffic on our local roads. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware of any plans Historic Environment Scotland eh, and the National Trust for Scotland have to erect keep left signs at exits to their properties, similar to those located at seaports, airports and other tourist routes, to act as a reminder to foreign drivers who may be unfamiliar with driving in Scotland and the wider UK? Fiona uh, of course, National Trust for Scotland are independent uh, of the Scottish Government. Uh, I am aware of the issue and in my constituency capacity have contacted Historic Environment Scotland about local issues. Uh, Transport Scotland are not aware of any plans generally to keep, uh, keep left signs at any of properties. And of course, if, if anything was placed on public roads, that would require consultation with the road authorities before erection. But you may be aware that Police Scotland and Road Safety Scotland yesterday launched a new campaign at Urquhart Castle to remind tourists to drive on the left. Uh, this campaign coincides with the peak tourism season in Scotland, encourages visitors to uh, enjoy Scottish roads safely. And that uh, new drive 
arriving in Scotland tourist information leaflet will be distributed when picking up a hire car and an electronic version will be issued at the time of booking. In addition to this, drive on the left wristbands in multiple languages to be worn on the left hand of drivers will be distributed via car rental companies to remind and prompt visitors to keep left. Supplementary from Claire Baker. Thank you. Uh, while it is good news that Historic Environment Scotland have seen a 5% increase in visitors' numbers in the past year, we've seen areas like Blackness in particular seen a 36% increase. This will add to the infrastructure and maintenance costs at site. And over the past two years, Historic Environment Scotland have seen a 12% cut in their budget. And while increased revenue is important, it does not compensate for this reduction. What discussions is the Cabinet Secretary having with the heritage sector over their ability to meet visitor demand, including improved accessibility? Fiona Hislop. Uh, well, as we speak, the eastern uh, borders of Linlithgow are being inspected uh, at Blackness, uh, the, which is the port for the town. Uh, Blackness, as she said, is one of the examples where outlander numbers have really has seen a major uh, increase in visitors. Uh, I was in Dune Castle last week, which also doubles as Castle Leoch uh, in the Outlander series, where I announced the latest of funding for our Rural Tourism Infrastructure uh, Fund, precisely to make sure that there's added investment. Uh, so Dune uh, Village will be connected better to the, the castle, so they can actually benefit from uh, the increasing numbers. Uh, increasing pressures of numbers means that across the country, uh, working with local communities, we're ensuring that uh, those infrastructure items, whether it's car parking, whether it's facilities, whether it's signage, whether it's paths, can help pressured areas. So we're very conscious of that. In relation to Historic Environment Scotland, their overall spend has been maintained uh, partly because they've had an increase in visitor numbers and indeed the uh, generation of their external funding has increased. So we're very conscious of that. But can I also stress, and this is very important, at a time of difficult financial pressures, we've actually managed to maintain the grant funding that Historic Environment Scotland gives to others. And and in terms of their own investment, they've been able to maintain their investment precisely because the increased numbers complemented by the investment by the Scottish Government and in particular the Scottish Government for the first time in recent years has provided capital investment to Historic Environment Scotland specifically to help with their infrastructure needs. So that's been very much welcomed by the Historic Environment Scotland Board. Question number three, Gordon MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government whether it is aware of any action being taken to ensure the Edinburgh festivals do not experience the same difficulties as last year regarding the complex visa rules faced by some artists. Fiona uh, I was very pleased to close the members' debate at the end of last month on this important topic of visa issues for festivals. For the benefit of those who weren't in the chamber that day, I've written to the Home Secretary, as well as other ministers, inviting their attendance at an international festival's visa summit here in Edinburgh. I have reiterated that a better solution for visiting artists, performers and others must be integral to any future immigration system. The UK Government's current visa application process for visitors coming to Scotland for our festivals is lengthy, complex and has a catalogue of examples of poor decision making. The Scottish Government is committed to ensuring Scotland's voice and that of our internationally renowned festivals is heard in the discussion of the, on the future immigration system. Gordon MacDonald. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and for her own efforts to address this problem. Clearly, this is an issue that needs to be addressed long term. However, would the Cabinet Secretary join me in calling on the UK Government to make the visa process more transparent for this year's festivals and allow, and allow festival organisers a chance to put any errors or omissions right before receiving a visa refusal? Fiona Hislop. I, I do indeed, and that's something that we've reminded the Home Office that they need to address for this year, not just in future years. And of course, we will have heard, and the member will have heard, of the real concern of, of two Indian uh, artists who have come as part of a UK-India cultural exchange programme set up by the UK government, funding from the British Council, Creative Scotland and the Scottish Government, uh, Paragon um, Music uh, and the Dan Music and Dance Charity, who promote Scottish inclusive music and dance, uh, were involved in, in this uh, particular programme. Uh, what I think is galling is that their non-disabled colleagues who were travelling with them to support them uh, from the Charitable Foundation in Shanghai 
I to Glasgow were granted entry without any trouble, but these two young artists weren't. It's a, an issue that we are looking into and ask the, the Home Office um, to look into. But as of now, and as of this weekend, we continue to see the issues that are facing cultural artists wanting to come and perform. They should be made welcome. We should celebrate our international musical connections and the Home Office really has to ensure that this year they have special attention to these issues. I'm aware that we're well over halfway through time-wise, but not question-wise. So if we could be a bit sharper, please. Question number four, Anna Sarwar. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met, remembering Srebrenica, Scotland, and what was discussed. Fiona has uh, There are regular discussions with remembering Srebrenica, uh, Scotland, on all matters of interest. Most recently, we discussed how ministers could participate in their lessons from delegations. And I understand that Ms Todd, the Minister for Children and Young People, attended earlier this month. Additionally, the First Minister also visited in uh, 2016 and described it as an incredibly powerful experience. The Scottish Government recognises the importance of learning from what happened so that the mistakes of the past are not repeated. Anna Sarwar. Last week I was in Sarajevo. In 1984 it hosted the Olympics and was seen as a multi-ethnic, multi-faith city. By 1992 it was a city under siege and in the four years that followed 160,000 people lost their lives. In these times of rising division and prejudice, can the Cabinet Secretary set out how we are learning those lessons in our classrooms and communities across the country? And best put by Rashad, a survivor, who said we must not just live next to each other, but live with each other. We must stop the us versus them and the othering, and we must speak out against prejudice no matter whenever or wherever it takes place. Fiona Hislop. And I followed um, the member's own contribution to his visit uh, with interest. Uh, and I think the message is how, of how rapid a community and society can move and descend into hate is something that we must all learn from. Uh, I know other colleagues that are pursuing the issues in re relation to classrooms and communities, but what I can say in relation to uh, trying to address those issues of uh, bringing people together, that it's not a case of us or them, that is precisely uh, the, the, the message that we've put into our We Are Scotland campaign in social media to make sure that we as a government stand up firm, because um, standing up firm and showing leadership at this time is so important. Uh, this society that we live in, and the, 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 the society particularly that has been fermented by some of the far right in this country should always lead us to be very, very vigilant. And that means uh, tackling issues up front rather than when they actually happen, that as we've seen in other countries, that these, these issues can descend very, very quick, quickly. And uh, that's something we should definitely guard against. Question number five, Tom Mason. Thank you, presiding officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it will support the tourism industry in championing the sector as a career destination of choice. Fiona uh, the Scottish Government has committed uh, to promoting tourism as a career of choice and has set aside £100,000 to develop a campaign to support this commitment. The campaign will build on the existing tourism skills inf uh, investment plan led by Skills Development Scotland that aims to address existing and future skills challenges across the sector, particularly those that will arise as a result of EU exit. The Scottish Government has also engaged with the Poverty Alliance with the aim of increasing the payment of the living wage and fair work practices within the sector to support this aim. Tom Mason. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. A vital part of encouraging people to work in the tourism is ensuring that people are studying this industry at further and higher education level. However, according to the Scottish Funding Council during 2017 and 18 at the North East Scotland College, 2,648 people were enrolled in health studies courses. 748 doing hair or personal care and only 178 studying tourism. Would the Cabinet Secretary not agree that we need more people taking on tourism courses and what does she plan to do to make it happen? Well, that's preci precisely why we're having a campaign to, to promote tourism as a career of choice. Uh, we have a reducing number of young people, as you might be aware, and so therefore we have to ha encourage people of all ages into the, the tourism sector. But of course, they're in competition with the health sector amongst others. So I think it's more important than ever that we uh, embark on such a campaign and have champions showing that tourism can be a very successful career choice and people can go very far, very young, and that should be very attractive to that market. Short supplementary, please, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how the tourism sector will be affected as a result of Brexit and visa restrictions? Uh, 
Fiona no, Heslop. Uh, severely uh, restricted. Uh, obviously, six of our ten key markets are in the EU, and of course, 12% um, of our workforce are EU nationals. It's essential that we retain those that are, are with us already and, and remark on how important they are to our society and our economy, but also the future pipeline of EU nationals that are required. And the current uh, UK immigration uh, white paper, which I, I sincerely hope is withdrawn and re re rewritten, has a £30,000 salary cap, and that will cause severe issues and difficulties for recruitment into this sector in the future. Um, before I call Mr Rennie, we're not going to get to the end of these questions, and that's a mark of people giving statements as well as questions and rather long answers too. Question number six, Willie Rennie. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what support it provides to the Scottish Fisheries Museum in Anstruther. Fiona uh, Scottish Government continues to provide support to the Scottish Fisheries Museum. In the current financial year, a total of 109,000 has been allocated to the museum, covering 75,000 for operational costs and 34,000 for capital expenditure. In 2018-19, the museum received additional in-year funding of 75,000 and a further 330,000 to assist in the refit of the museum flagship. Uh, the museum flagship Reaper um, has had investment uh, as a total from the Scottish Government uh, for of £830,000. The Scottish Fisheries Museum celebrates its 50th anniversary this year and I look forward to join the celebrations that begin on the 4th of July when Reaper returns to its home port of Anstruther. Willie Rennie. I declare an interest as a trustee of the museum and the Secretary is right about the 50 years uh, of this national museum and they are grateful for the support that the Scottish Government has provided, not just the museum over that time, but also the Reaper. And the special events, including a flotilla of up to 50 boats in early July, will mark a special occasion. But can the Minister perhaps set out what further opportunities there would be to make sure that the museum engages in the wider community right across Scotland to make sure that those communities engage with our seas and the fishing industry? Fiona Hislop. Uh, I, I think the member is quite right to uh, advertise this fantastic celebration and I hope everybody can take part in that. Uh, but we have to do more indeed. Uh, only yesterday at the Scottish Historic Environment um, Forum we had a session on industrial heritage and particularly how we can engage more people in sites and museums like that of the Fisheries Museum to ensure people understand our very rich heritage, not just in the places of Fife for example, but further afield. Question number seven, Bill Bowman. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what assessment it plans of the impacts on tourist numbers in Tayside. Fiona Hislop. I was very pleased to speak at the Dundee and Angus Tourism Conference in March last year, bringing together the area's tourism interests and bodies with a focus on the wider tourism opportunities. We understand from figures supplied by the Moffat Centre that visitor numbers in the Dundee and Angus area have increased by 13.3% for the first quarter of this year compared with last, and the VNA has a wider impact uh, to support visitor numbers elsewhere. Uh, Visit Scotland is supporting both businesses and local authorities in the Tayside area to develop a regional tourism strategy. Bill Bowman. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Tayside has international attractions such as the VNA, but it does not have international air connections from Dundee Airport. Will the Scottish Government, given that it has poured millions of pounds into Prestwick Airport but has not matched this in Dundee, commit to investing in Dundee Airport to bring international tourists to the heart of Tayside? Fiona Hislop. Uh, I'm not the Transport Secretary, but he's correct in identifying uh, the importance of bringing direct flights in from wherever they come. There's also some creative work that's been done for some uh, airports in particular in doing so. And obviously that's something that as the Tourism sector, Secretary, I would support, but I can't give him uh, any uh, uh, plans to date. But if there are any that I can contribute from other colleagues, I, we can communicate with you on that regard. Very quickly, Kenneth Gibson. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what progress has been made with devising and implementing the Coeg Tourism Trail. Fiona Hislop. January announced £300,000 from the Scottish Government to support Coeg feasibility work. This has enabled the establishment of a partnership steering group uh, with the industry in North Ayrshire Council, and we're also providing North Ayrshire Council with a further £400,000 for 1920 to progress the project. Extremely quickly, please, Mr. Gibson. I thank Gibson. the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and the financial support. The COEG, the Fives, expected to attract an additional 80,000 visitors to North Ayrshire next year, supporting 168 jobs and allowing £4.5 million extra 
of economic impact. Can the uh, Cabinet Secretary expand on how the timescales for devising and implementation of the COIG tie in with the 2020 being the year of Scotland's coast and waters? Fiona uh, the Ayrshire Tourism Action Plan, I understand, goes from 2018 to 2022. It's called Making Waves. But of course, we've designated next year as the year of coast and waters. So it's a fantastic opportunity to advertise the COIG and to make sure people visit Ayrshire to celebrate everything it has to offer, maritime and otherwise. Well, that wasn't bad. That concludes portfolio questions. We'll move on to the next item of business.